Okay, in this lesson, lesson 5.4, we're going to be looking at all the things that we've learned about systems of equations, and we're going to be um, able to determine if we need to solve using graphing, elimination, or substitution based on um, the slope-intercept form. So with the system, we know that the solution is the ordered pair that will satisfy all equations in the system. And systems can have exactly one solution, which basically has been the case in all the lessons leading up to this one. 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3 have had exactly one solution. But today we're going to examine situations where they have no solutions or possibly infinitely many solutions. So we've learned three ways to solve them. We've learned to solve them by graphing, and that was lesson 5.1. We've learned to solve by substitution, 5.2, and to solve by elimination, 5.3. And there are videos in your um, playlist for all three of those ways to solve. So if we looked at the graphing and what the graphs would look like, um, when there is one solution, as in the first case, we see where the two lines will intersect. We can identify the solution because it would be an ordered pair at the point of intersection. In the second case, there is no solution. Uh, no solution for these two lines, and the lines are parallel. That would be the reason why. We know by definition parallel lines will never intersect. And finally, in the third uh, situation, um, we see infinite number of solutions because they are the same line. So the red line and the blue line, they coincide. They're the exact same line, and every point would be a solution. So looking at linear systems in two variables and the three scenarios we've just talked about, one solution, no solution, and infinitely many. Um, when there is one solution, you will be asked to name that solution. And then you can decide, do you want to do it by graphing, substituting, or eliminating. If there is no solution, then there's no need to do either of the three methods. If there are infinitely many, and again, no need to do any of the methods. So today's lesson is going to be really helpful to you because before you solve any system, you probably want to know if there's any need to do any of the work. So looking at this first system of equations, we could put them into slope-intercept form. And if you're not sure how to do that, that is solving for y, you would need to go back to the lesson um, in the playlist from Chapter 4. I believe it is Lesson 4.6 in your textbook to review, or you can watch the video notes, and I will put them on your Google, Google Classroom as a review. Um, for what to do. But remember, you look for the variable y, you want to isolate that variable, so you have to undo all the things that are being done to it using inverse operations. So for the first one, we can see that the first step, we had y, and it had this 2x minus y, so we want to get rid of this 2x, so we subtracted 2x on both sides of the equal sign. Okay, since that got rid of that, it left us with this equation, but we're not done yet because we have a negative y. So in this case, we want to divide by a negative 1 for all three terms. And then we have y by itself. We have negative 2 divided by negative 1 is a positive 2. Positive 2 divided by negative 1 is a negative 2. So this is our solved for y, or our equation in slope-intercept form. For the second equation, we are subtracting by x on both sides. And then there's no need to divide because y has a coefficient of a positive 1. So negative x minus 2 is the slope-intercept form of that equation. So upon inspection, when I look at the two equations, I look first at the slope. Remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So today we'll be looking at the slopes and the y-intercepts. 
So in the red equations, I have a slope of 2x and a slope of negative 1. They are different. And because they are different, there will be one solution. Um, the y-intercepts are the same in this case, which only indicates that that is actually the point where they intersect. But you would need to either graph them or use substitution or elimination in order to determine that the solution is 0, negative 2. So when there is one solution, you need to name that solution. You would know upon inspection, looking at the two red equations, after we put them in slope-intercept form, they have different slopes and different intercepts. And that will tell you that you need to find what the solution is. So look at this equations, these two equations, 3x plus 2y equals 3 and 3x plus 2y equals negative 4. Upon inspection, when I put them into slope-intercept form, and again, reviewing that concept, I would be subtracting 3x from both sides, which gives me this step, and finally, dividing by 2, which is positive, which gives me my equation, y is equal to negative 3 over 2x plus 3 over 2. Looking at the other equation, minusing 3x gives me this midway point where I could divide by 2. Again, I'm going through the steps of how to isolate y so that I get y is equal to negative 3 over 2x minus 2. And I inspect the slopes, which in this case are the same. Then I look at the y-intercept. They are different. When the slopes are the same and the y-intercepts are different, there is no solution because these lines are parallel. You do not need to graph them. You do not need to use substitution or elimination if you find that they are parallel lines. Okay? So you have to write no solution because they are parallel. And we know this because they have the same slope but different intercepts. In our third situation, putting them in slope-intercept form, we find that they are exactly the same, okay? So for this, we would be subtracting x from both sides, which gives us this step, and dividing by negative 1. We get y is equal to x plus 3. Here, we'll subtract 2x from both sides. And then we will divide by a negative 2 as the second step. So there's always going to be either one or two steps to solve these. And simplifying to y is equal to x plus 3. When you notice that they have the same slope of 1, you look at the y-intercept. And in this case, it is the exact same y-intercept. Therefore, they are, they are the exact same line. And infinitely many solutions would be found. You don't need to find them. You tell me infinitely many because they are the same line and have the work to support it. So looking at the graph, it's infinitely many, and upon inspection we found same slope, same intercept, it's the same equation, that's why there are infinitely many solutions. So to determine without graphing, there's this easier way, and it's kind of, kind of what we've been modeling and talking about this whole time, is what type, um, to determine what type of solution exists within a system. And when we ask what type, we're asking one solution, no solution, or infinitely many. We aren't necessarily finding the solution at first, okay? We are determining what type. Um, by writing them in slope-intercept form, again, solving the equation for y, m is the slope, b is the y-intercept, we would be able to tell if there is one solution, no solution, and infinitely many. However, if there is one solution, you must find it. And this is where you get to then use your favorite method. You could graph it, you could substitute, or you could eliminate. So to determine without graphing, looking at the equations in slope-intercept form. One solution, the lines have different slopes. They may or may not have the different y-intercepts, but if they have different slopes, you will find a solution, and then you must find it. Um, if there is no solutions, it's because the lines have the same slope. Different intercepts, they are parallel, 
and they will never intersect. So no solution and no need to use any of the methods to find a solution because you won't find one. And infinitely many solutions, the lines are the same slope, same intercept. There will be infinitely many solutions and you are not required to find them. You just say there are infinitely many. There's too many to name, okay? So that'll make it a little bit easier. So determine without graphing, give, um, given the following lines, determine what type of solution exists. So the first thing you want to do is put them both into slope-intercept form. Equation 1 is the only one you'll need to change. Equation 2 is already in the right form. Solving for y, you get 1 half x minus 5 over 6 and 1 half x minus 3. Upon inspection, we see that the slope is the same. Since the slope is the same, but they have different y-intercepts, there is no solution because the lines are parallel and we are done. So what usually happens is you have to understand these rules for special cases, and this is not the first time you've seen these. When we were working with variables on both sides, and we were solving those in chapter one, and you, you need to go back to that. Um, you know, we, we, we kind of reviewed that a little bit, or we talked about it when we were doing substitution because we had variables on both sides. If you automatically started solving it, right, just automatically saw, oh, these eliminate, so I'm going to eliminate them, or whatever the case may be, and you get a solution that is 0 equals 0, or 2 equals 2, or 5 equals 5, or something that's always true, right? 0 does equal 0. Your answer, or in this case, the special case would be that there are infinite number of solutions because this is true, right? Um, if you get something that's not true, right, 5 equals 2, or 0 equals 7, or anything that is, doesn't make sense, these lines are parallel and there are no solutions. So if by chance you start substituting and you come up with some interesting solutions where you don't just solve for the variable and then substitute it back in, you don't get x is equal to or y is equal to, you get something that looks strange, understand that if it's an identity, meaning that it's the same thing on both sides, it's an infinitely many solutions, and if it's not the same things, then there is no solution. So here's a couple examples um, of what inconsistent would look like if you started solving them by substitution. Remember that since they're both in slope-intercept form, um, we have taken these equations, right, and we've maybe substituted one in for the other. We, we've done a lot of work with that. So this is what the work would look like. Okay. So starting with the equation, you can see variables on both sides. Negative 3x plus 5 equals negative 3x minus 2. You would be adding 3x to both sides. Then you would be um, adding the 2 to both sides and coming up with something like this, the 7 equals 0, which is inconsistent or means that they are parallel lines and they have no solution. Of course, I am hoping that after today's lesson, if the lines are in slope-intercept form, you could identify that the slopes are the same, which therefore means they are parallel. Okay, so let's hope that that's the case. Save you a lot of work. Um, when there's infinitely many, so a lot of times maybe we would be looking at something and either if we did substitution or elimination, right? You know, right away we want to start working on these. Um, if you put them into slope-intercept form, you would have found that they are the same line, but if you didn't and started substituting, you would have work that looks like this. So if we substituted and say solved um, b for x, we're dividing, um, and then you would get a substituted value. So remember in substitution, what we found, x in this second equation, we substituted in for this x in the first equation to get this step. And then by solving it, we get an answer that is 6 equals 6, which is always true. That's what means there are infinitely many. It is the same line. However, if we had put it in slope-intercept form um, and solved both of these equations for y first, we would also see that they are the same line.